A little over a year ago, we launched um, something called the Digital Members Lounge. And initially, the f it was about functionality for managing your membership. So renewing, upgrading, you know, ordering a new membership card, what, you know, just sort of the basic functionality of, of membership and just making it easier for people. Um, we also had the members calendar, which is available as a printed calendar, but we did an online version as well, um, and just some other resources. And then, and then we were sort of asking ourselves, well, how can we make, how can we add to the benefit of membership um, in an online way? Um, and how can we take the site and expand it beyond just management functionality? Um, and so we were looking at the kind of experience of what you get as a member at the museum and what are some of the benefits. Well, it's, it's a, a, lot, a lot of it is about physical benefits. So free admission, um, discounts in the store, or that's, that kind of thing. So what does that mean when you're on the other side of the country or in, an, in another country? You know, a lot of people become members when they come to the museum um, because it makes sense from a financial point of view, but then why would they join again if they're not coming to the museum all the time? Uh, why would they renew? So um, trying to think about that experience, and um, so we met this company based in Spain, which is actually where we're having this conversation, um, and uh, they had this interesting way of doing virtual tours that was actually pushing through images as if you've a little bit more like you were in that space. So, so it, the experience, rather than being this kind of point and spin um, that you get with a lot of 3D walkthroughs, um, where you're kind of like just jumping from point to point, really felt a little bit like a, a movement and path through the space. And we thought, well, and it was also just done with a regular camera and tripod equipment that we already owned. Um, and so we thought, well, this would be an interesting way to see if we create a virtual tour of the museum, does that mean that people who can't come can feel a little bit like they have that access to the museum um, virtually? And so we've created several galleries um, and added the audio content uh, interpretive label. So all of the content that you get when you come physically to the museum is available through these tours. And, and I think that that idea of a preview is very consistent with what member benefits are, you know, and, and so that's certainly another thing that we're asking is like how do we, you know, do, do the notion of previews online for members, um, but in a way that feels like a member benefit, not a non-member exclusion, you know, and there, it's a fine line. And, and so I think it's, we're, we're really trying to, you know, enhance membership, not detract from the general experience. And I think that's, that's something that's very, um, it's not an easy line to, to balance. Um, and so I think that's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, I think we've, we've looked at a number of different models and, and may continue to explore them, but um, you know, for example, uh, there's an interesting phenomenon between something like a subscription versus a membership. And, and the membership, because you still have the benefit of coming to the museum and when you show up at the door, you can get in, there's, a, there's something, it's more of an enhancement and an added benefit to something that you're already kind of subscribed to. And that t seems to mean, as far as we've learned from talking to people in, in our surveys, that seems to mean a little bit less of an emphasis on um, the regularity of updates, you know, so that if we do a new piece of content, you know, once or twice a month, or, you know, a new tour or a new video or whatever, once or twice a month, that may be enough. Whereas, you know, if somebody is subscribing to, to a stream of content, you know, even if it's some fairly nominal fee, like there's an expectation of delivery in a particular time, um, and you have to be ready to commit to that in terms of the resources and the staffing and the, and the new content. So it's, it's kind of, it, you know, it almost seems easier to do this subscription idea, but in fact, it's a lot harder because there's, that, there's a higher expectation um, for, for, in fact, a lower price. Um, so I think that's kind of an interesting challenge. And then, you know, we're certainly offering a lot more um, electronic kind of products, if you will, um, like online courses and ebooks and things like that. So, you know, then there's this kind of a la carte option of, you know, I want particular pieces of content 
and people seem to understand that certain types of content they would pay for, but then other types of content, there's an expectation that they wouldn't. And so you have to kind of really look at what the differences are. But I think part of it is seeing, does this have an appeal to people? We don't know. You know, is this enough to make somebody feel like they can have access to the museum when they're not physically here? Um, we've also been adding video gallery talks. Um, the members have access to special gallery talks. Um, in the in the museum, and so we thought, well, let's let's record those and make them available online for people who can't come and do the gallery talks in person. So that right now is most of the exclusive content that we have as part of the site. And um, I think what we found so far, and it's you know early days yet, is that people are spending a lot of time when they do the the walkthroughs, but we still need to get more of the word out about what this is and how to use it, and think about different ways that we can. Um, play off of the experience. So whether it's different entry points or being able to feature a particular gallery, like, you know, go directly into the Brancusi gallery and things like that. Um, so I think, you know, we've just got the base foundation there and it'll be interesting to see if it's effective for either um, getting new members or retaining existing members or, you know, if it's something that people do once and then never go back to. I mean, all those questions I think we still are, have to answer.